like you were being catfished? I kind of was. A few months. To tell you the truth, I cried. The meetings started till they are not happy with that. They are against the age factor. That is it. <laughs> Watch me take a good thing and mess it all up in one night. Saudis, welcome back to the number one YouTube channel in the entire world. Today, we're going to be diving balls deep into the relationship between Summit and Jenny on 90 Day Fiance. This has been a highly requested video from the Wet Sock community because Jenny and Summit's relationship is really sus and messy and they have a lot of scandals. Jenny is from Palm Springs, California and is 62 years old, while Summit is from India and he is 32 years old. When Jenny opens up with the audience on 90 Day Fiance the other way, this season, she admits that she has been sleeping on her daughter's couch. She has no car, no house, no job, no money because she gave up everything she knows in order to move to India in order to be with Samit, her one true love. Let me tell you about this fascinating love story. So she met her true love, Samit, eight years ago on Facebook where he actually pretended to be another guy. So clearly instead of Nine Day Fiance, they should have been on the show Catfish because she actually got catfished. <laughs> but one day I was on Facebook and I got a friend request. From... At first, Summit said he was Michael Jones, a good-looking 25-year-old man from London, England. But realistically, he was Summit from India. Light up, light up, sketches! Light up, light up! He actually um, didn't tell me who he really was exactly. Like, you were being catfished? I kind of was. <laughs> I could see the look on your face. When he realized that he was getting real feelings for me and he could tell that I was getting real feelings for him. He confessed to me that he was actually Samit from India. And in Jenny's case, she thought she was getting one of the Hemsworth brothers when realistically she got one of the Oompa Loopas from Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. Can you imagine Jenny's shock to realize that she's dating the son of Deep Roy, the Oompa Loompa from Charlie and the Chocolate Factory? Who, by the way, we are friends. We have two pictures together on IG. Me and the Oompa Loompas from Charlie and the Chocolate Factory are like, you know, best friends. We hang out in Santa Monica all the time. It's a thing. Google it. Weird flex, but okay. Now, I don't know about y'all, but I live in the real world. So in what universe is a guy that looks like this trying to get with a gold grandma that looks like this? Unless the old grandma is rich and they're trying to be a sugar baby. Other than that though, you really don't see it that much. I'm all for like acceptance and these age relationships or age difference relationships. Those are the next big thing, right? So after Jenny found out that she was being catfished and Summit wasn't who he said he was, she instead said, you know what? I accept him for who he is because I've already loved him. And even though he's not the person he portrayed himself to be on Facebook, I still love him because we've talked and we've developed this relationship and he is still kind of cute. Aww. Meanwhile, I'm like, bruv, how are you in love with somebody you've never met and he already catfished you? How can you develop feelings for somebody that lied to you off it? He didn't have a problem with me saying, oh, I'm not who I've been saying I was for a few months. To tell you the truth, I cried. But alas, what can I say? A lot of people on the show are missing cells of the brain. So instead of cutting her losses and realizing that she's been catfished, Jenny instead decides to look past Summit's lies and move to India in order to be with him. Unfortunately for Jenny, after she moved to India, she soon realized that Summit's parents didn't approve of their relationship together. So she ended up moving back to the United States and they've continued an online relationship for five years. Five years of not seeing somebody that originally catfished you and you're in a relationship with this person. Seems legit. For years, Summit communicated to Jenny that he couldn't marry her and be with her because his parents did not approve of her. Aw, Summit can't marry Jenny because his parents said he's not allowed to. Do you guys think he gets an allowance too at 32 years old? Still listening to mommy and daddy at 32 years old. Must suck having no balls. I like to triple down on this point. For any girls out there, if your man says he won't marry you because of what his parents think and he's a whole ass adult and he's still listening to everything his parents say, you need to respect yourself and leave that dude. Respect yourselves out there, ladies, okay? There's a lot of beta males out there, but there's a lot of alphas that want to get wifed up too. So you should hold on and wait until an alpha comes along and then pounce. Don't settle for a beta. Jenny says that last year, Summit promised to tell his family that they are in fact together and promised to marry her. So she took out her life savings and moved to India. Meanwhile, her daughters and all her friends are like, Jenny, don't full send it to India. No, what are you doing? But she still sent it anyway. So Jenny moves to India and makes a shocking discovery, you guys. It turns out that Summit has been lying to both his parents and Jenny the entire time. Wow, I never saw this coming. Where's a wall so I can bash my head in? 
Wait, you're telling me the same dude that lied about his physical appearance when he first met you is also lying about other stuff? What are the odds? During the time Jenny lived in India, it turns out that Summit was spending half his time with his family and half his time with Jenny. She often would be like, where are you? I'm in India, I moved here for you. And he would be like, hey babe, I'm with my parents. And he would spend days with his parents and he would split the time between his parents and Jenny and play both sides of the field. Not a very gentlemanly thing to do on Summit's behalf because you know, when a girl takes out her life savings and moves to India for you in order to be with you, uh, it's not nice to, you know, split time with your parents and to not tell your parents that you're seeing this person. I mean, you think you would have a little respect for someone that moved to another country in order to be with you. But Summit is not a gentleman. He is, in fact, a catfish. So we expected it. Next thing you know, Jenny makes a very shocking discovery. A man answers the door and it turns out that it is the father of Summit's wife. This dude is already married. It was an arranged marriage. A lot of people in India do the whole arranged marriage thing. I don't really get it. I think it's dumb as fuck. But some people do, and it would be culturally insensitive for me to say it's dumb as f even though it is dumb as f and I don't care about cultural sensitivity. Damn! So upon discovering that Summit was already married, he has been telling her that he has been trying to get a divorce from his wife. It was an arranged marriage. They don't really love each other. And he's trying to get a divorce. That is what Summit has communicated to Jenny, but Jenny was very shocked about this news and she actually went back to America and that's where we're picking up from the show. So the scene opens up with Summit and his brother getting the house ready and prepared for Jenny to arrive so that they can live together. See, last time his parents intruded in their relationship and often would stop by or give Jenny a piece of their mind. So he wants nothing. Of that. old, but this is okay. Uh, mom and dad, they are aware of it. You are again moving in here with Jenny. Yeah, they were still, they are not happy with that. They are against the age factor. That is it. Okay, did you guys see Summit's response where he was like, uh, yeah, well, yeah, they know. I feel like he's lying right off the bat. I don't think he actually told his parents the entire truth. Why the f you lying? Why you always lying? Now, as for the age gap issue, I understand that's a big issue in their relationship. Comment below and let me know what you guys think about the age gap relationship. Some people think it's weird. I want to think love conquers all, but it doesn't conquer all when your guy's a catfish. I don't have a problem with age gap relationships. I do have a problem with liars. So what's your plan now? The plan is like that once I get divorced, then I'll marry Jenny. So as Samit and his brother keep talking, it turns out that they talk about their culture. So I guess in Indian culture, it is the eldest son's responsibility to take care of the parents when they are elder. And the brother worded it in a way to where it's the son's responsibility because of everything that the parents do for the son. You know, raising the son, doing all the things that a parent should be doing. So I don't necessarily agree with this. I do think that your son and your kid should be able to marry whoever they want and you should give advice. But I think at a certain point, you need to respect the fact that your son is going to be with whoever he wants to be with. Now, his parents are not doing that. His parents are firmly against communicating and talking to Jenny. This actually happens quite frequently when Jenny and Samet will be FaceTiming and she'll be like, oh my God, how are your parents? Do your parents want to talk by chance? And he'll be like, oh yeah, let me go check goes back, talks to his parents and comes back and is like, they don't want to talk to you. So I feel like right away she knows that Summit's parents don't approve of her and don't like her and don't want to have anything to do with her. Uh, I do think that that's kind of tricky because you want your in-laws to like you and I feel like Jenny's never going to get anywhere with Summit's parents. I think they're very stuck in their ways. For the whole culture argument, I know I'm going to get a lot of people that's like, it's normal there to respect your family and listen to everything your parents say. You can respect your parents without listening to everything they say. I feel like being restricted by your culture culture is the same thing as being restricted by your religion. If you're restricted by anything, I think it's dumb. This life which I'm choosing, mm -hmm. it's at least giving me happiness. But still, we have to live in that society. But if society is not helping you now. Okay, so here I actually like Summit. I think he's showing a bit of backbone. He's talking with his brother about culture. His brother's very warped, especially his mind. He's very set in his ways. And he's like, we have to listen to everything our parents say. It's our culture. We have to do this. And Summit says, mom and dad literally forced an arranged marriage on me. And they didn't help me with anything. You know who did help me though? Jenny. And he's like, I'm going to do everything for Jenny because she helped me get through this, through this hard time in my life when my own family didn't help me. Nobody helped me. And he looks in his brother's eyes and he asked him, would you have said the same thing to me if mom and dad were in the room and his brother says no. So from this, I'm gathering that his brother's a beta pussy that's going to listen to his culture and his parents for his entire life and just be a drone. Check it out, corporal. We'll cover you. 
Roger, Roger. So based on first impressions, right away, I think I like Summon more than his brother because he's becoming somewhat aware that he has free will. I'm happy. I want them to be happy because I'm happy. At the end of their conversation, Summit's brother says he's going to communicate this to mom and dad and try to get them to understand the current situation. Now let's check in with Jenny and see what she's up to. This will be my second time moving to be with Summit. Then there's actually hope for us now. Summit filed for his divorce. So I'm going back to India. This is your friendly neighborhood wet sock reminding you to join the channel membership program for the Your Wet Sock channel where I upload exclusive videos for all channel members and you get custom emojis. There's a bunch of perks and it's super worth it. Are you ready to get on that long flight again? Yeah. And this better be the last time. I know, let's, let's cross our fingers and knock on wood and cross our toes and everything else. So first impressions of Jenny, I'm gonna say this in the nicest way. I feel like Jenny has really low self-esteem. I feel like the bar she sets for herself is down here. Just because he is getting a divorce from an arranged marriage doesn't mean that he's not stringing you along. I actually think that regardless of whether he was with Jenny or not, he would be using the other woman as an excuse to get out of his arranged marriage. And I think that's probably what he's doing. Have you seen the papers that we've been talking about for the last couple weeks? The divorce papers? Mm hmm I actually... No! So Jenny's daughters ask if someone has shown her the divorce papers and given Jenny actual evidence that he is getting a divorce and going through with it, and she replies no. I don't know how hard it is to uh, snap a picture of divorce papers. I feel like it's not that hard if you have your attorney. His excuse is he can't meet with his attorney because it's holiday. How, how long is it holiday? So Jenny's literally sacrificing her entire life in the United States. She's gonna move apart from her children in order to go and have a relationship with somebody in India when she has no actual evidence that this guy is really getting a divorce. This is a huge risk for her. I understand my daughter's concern, but filing for a divorce in India, it's a big deal. Bye, Grandma. Bye, Bye, Grandma. So Jenny says she loves Summit and she trusts him and she's gonna go through with it. And his daughters are like, maybe you should have waited before you see the papers. And she's like, wow, you're right. I've never thought of that, but here we are. I already have the blank. Like, I just feel like, do people not think? Do people not use their brains anymore? So Jenny says that getting a divorce in India is a big deal because of arranged marriages. It's part of the culture. So by doing this, Summit is choosing Jenny and you see her face light up and she's like, he's chosen me. He really loves me. Yeah, Jenny, he chose you after eight years of you being his side piece. So congratulations. Like, I don't know what to say. Like, congrats. You got this prize, which is this Oompa Loompa looking mother So right now, let's look at that pivotal moment in the show when Summit confronts his parents about Jenny. So Summit's mother goes on to say that your father's done so much for you. He fulfilled all your wishes, even when he couldn't afford some of your wishes. He worked hard and fulfilled them. Well, congratulations for doing what a parent is supposed to do, Summit's mom and dad. The next thing Summit's parents say is pretty comical. They actually try to make their son feel bad for paying for his divorce fees, which total $20,000. And the dad says that he has to pay $20,000 and he's all upset about that for paying the divorce fees for an arranged marriage that the parents forced their son into. So you reap what you sow. Your son didn't want to marry this person. You forced a marriage on top of him and then you're upset that you have to pay the divorce fees when it doesn't work out. Uh, yeah, it doesn't make much sense there. Maybe don't make your kid get married to somebody he doesn't want to get married to. So Summit's father actually says that his entire life's earning has gone towards the money of this divorce case, which is $20,000. Hey man, maybe you shouldn't have arranged a marriage for your kid with somebody he doesn't love. If the result is you paying for it, and yeah, Summit could pay for it, but because you forced him into marriage, marrying this girl, I think it's only fair that the parents should pay for it because you guys forced him into this marriage. I think we can all agree that from someone's parents perspective, it's wrong for them to do that, to force their son into a marriage he doesn't want to be in. But I can also understand why they're skeptic about him marrying Jenny, because it is kind of weird to see your son marrying a grandma. Ma'am, how can I accept it? How can I accept it? The relationship is odd. You're looking at your happiness. You're looking at your happiness. I've seen your happiness. I've heard the things I've heard. I've said 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 the things I've heard. Even though Jenny and Summit's relationship is odd, I think Summit's parents have to accept this odd relationship if they still want a relationship with their son. Because clearly their son wants to be with Jenny and I feel like the parents really need to accept that fact because that's what 
what's happening. And at some point, it's not about he wants to be with Jenny. That has nothing to do with you. And if you want a relationship with your son, you should probably back off and not have so much of a say into your son's relationships of what your son wants for his life. I feel like you have to accept it. And yeah, they're playing the whole, oh my God, your entire life summit. We paid for everything your entire life. We didn't know that he would be like this. अरे हमने एडजस्ट करने की सोचा था मम्मी मैं मर रहा था तीन मैं मर रहा था यार ठीक है गलती हमसे हुई फिर क्यों नहीं करा हेल्प ये स्टेप मेरे को लेना पड़ा his parents are really like, yo, about that whole arranged marriage thing, sorry it didn't work out, thought we'd adjust, and you know, you guys would figure it out, but you know, our bad. So let me get this right, it's 2020 and we're still arranging marriages for our kids like it's the feudal era, what's going on guys? I don't care if it's in the culture or whatever it is, it's bullshit, okay? Obviously it's not gonna work out if you arrange marriage with somebody you don't even know. So these kids have to marry people they don't even know, and you have to work it, what if they're not compatible? What if they're not compatible as people or in the bedroom or anything like that? It's just pointless cuz then you're rushing to get divorced it's dumb when someone is speaking with his parents, he goes through a whole volume of different emotions and you can really see his acting. Someone needs to give someone an Oscar for this performance because it is immaculate. I was the one who was suffering. <laughs> I honestly God don't know why Summit's mother is crying. I think the guilty people or the people that are usually the villains end up crying when you put them on the spot like this. Like if anyone should be crying, it should be Summit. Your kid literally married someone he didn't love in order to make his parents happy. I tried committing suicide. Wow, that's a huge bombshell. So three times in that marriage, Summit told his parents that he wanted to commit suicide. Summit also touched on a good point that his parents signed him up for the whole arranged marriage thing because of what society thinks and their society and their culture, what their neighbors think about everything, that it's normalized. Just because something's normalized doesn't mean that it's the right thing to do. So after Summit spoke with his parents and they both broke down and talked about the current situation, there was a period of healing. And then the next bit of drama we had was when Jenny gave Summit a promise ring and he denied it. So oh, was it? <laughs> So when the scene opens up, Jenny and Summit just finished having intercourse. Try not to throw up. I know you guys don't want a mental image of that, but we're just gonna carry on. King love was passionate. Now she can totally dominate being like kind of thing. That's what I like. <laughs> oh, ew, uh, uh, Summit, you dirty dog. He's into that whole domination, you know, uh, BTSM. Play. Oh my god, dude. That's gross. Just to correct myself, I don't think the whole domination thing is gross, but I got a mental image of Jenny dominating Summit, and now I gave that mental image to you guys, and now we're all feeling nauseous. I got something for you to show you how much I love you and how much I appreciate everything that you've been doing, how hard you've been fighting for us to be together. Really? I'd like to give it to you. So after their incredibly mortifying conversation about intercourse, Jenny actually got Summit a gift. Jenny got Summit a promise ring and she hands it to him and says, you're so lucky to have me forever. Yeah, you know, nothing like an old granny with a turkey neck forever. That sounds super lit, dude. I just wanna give him something and show him, you mean everything to me, you, you're everything to me. Here, I, I promise myself to you. So that's my way of showing you Thank how you. much I love you. Correct me if I'm wrong, guys, but I haven't seen Promise Reigns or heard of that since middle school. I feel like that was the era for that. I feel like it's kind of cringe for a 63 or 62-year-old woman to be giving that to a 32-year-old guy. But I thought, like, uh, we're gonna do a ceremony for that. We had a plan, like, we have a plan to get married, mm -hmm. so... Okay, then give it back to me. <laughs> okay, we'll wait then. Okay. Yikers, this is awkward. Okay, so Summit has a problem with wearing a promise ring before they get married, but when he was married with another girl, he was having sex with Jenny. So I'm not sure if I understand the logic there, buddy. The promise ring is not the same thing as a wedding band, so I don't really understand that logic. I feel like Summit should have just accepted it and been like, wow, you got me a promise ring after you dominated me. That's super dope. Because the previous conversation was about domination, I thought the gift she was gonna get him was some kind of like dildos. Maybe she was gonna raid penguins giant dildo collection and get him one of those big boys. I'm 
I'm embarrassed that Smith just shot me down like that. His reaction just wasn't what I was expecting at all. I'm just getting sick of waiting for this to happen. I just want to do it like make that day special when we are promising exceeding ranks and telling each other yes. I don't think that it was a time for a ring. The situation became really awkward. I feel like Jenny's like a 12 year old, even though she's like 63. She's acting like a little bit of a 12 year old here. He rejected my gift of the promise ring. I was promising myself to love you forever. Also, I don't know about you guys, but it feels more like they're pen pals than an actual couple. I just don't really see them together as a couple, but let me know what you guys think about this in the comments. So when are we gonna have this ceremony? After your divorce is final or what? I need to check, check it on my lawyer first. Can I get engaged with before my divorce or not? So Summit goes on to say he would like to do it as soon as possible, but he doesn't know what the rules are about being engaged prior to his divorce. So Jenny goes on to say, a lot of people think I'm naive, but I'm not. This time I will get a ring ceremony. Yeah, Jenny, I bet you said that the past eight years. Every time you visit India, like, I'm, I'm gonna get the ring ceremony. Me and him are gonna get married. You know, eight years later, dog. Best wishes to you guys. Hope it happens doubt it. Well guys, that's part one of a three-part series on this couple, so I'll be uploading more videos on this couple. Make sure to comment below, subscribe, follow me on Twitch and on Instagram right now.